If you're using tracks on stage, then you should 100% be using a MIDI controller. MIDI controller is going to give you hands-free control of your tracks so that you can repeat sections, uh, control Ableton Live all remotely from your MIDI controller. But a question I often get from people that are new to running tracks in Ableton Live or maybe coming from session view to arrangement view is, hey, I've got a set built, I've got multiple songs, but how can I make it to where I can select an individual song in my set? Maybe they love the fact they can press play and go all throughout all their different songs but what if they want the ability to say jump to song two jump to song three skip around navigate their set list how can they do that in their set so that's what we're going to talk about in this particular video is adding locators to our ableton live arrangement view session that we built with multiple songs and then number two mini mapping to those locators so we can navigate our songs and then number three i'm going to throw in as a bonus to show you how you can navigate your set using your midi controller easily with just a few different buttons in fact i only really make four mini mappings to my entire Ableton live set and I'm going to show you how you can navigate your set that way. So let's dive in. Let's get started. First thing I want to show you is this is a set that I built um, in Ableton Live uh, of multiple songs in Arrangement View. Now to speed up this process, I'm going to link to how I formatted my songs, how I built my set. I did all of that by using a template. And that's something I call the three-part framework for using tracks. Number one is create a template for live performance. Number two, format all your songs using that template. And then number three, open that template to create a set of your formatted songs. If you want to build a set that looks Looks as clean and as simple to navigate as this set does, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template and you can download my template completely for free. It's going to give you the same exact formatting that you see here. Plus, it's going to include locators that you could pre map to your MIDI controller, like I'm going to show you in this video. It's just going to help make things a lot easier to navigate. So, first thing, let's talk about adding locators to our set. So, we've got three songs here. Now, when I use my template, my locators are already added, but I've deleted them for the sake of this example. And I want to add a locator for each one of my songs. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my song here and I'm going to right click and I want to move my mouse down to where I, uh, this is called the scrub area. And you get this little speaker icon where if I clicked, I could scrub my audio, jump around my song, but I actually want to go to the beginning of my song and right click. And I'm going to do add locator. Now, because this is song one, I'm going to press uh, type one. I'm going to do a dash and I'm going to add the name of this song, which the name of this particular song is called living hope. Now I want this to be all the way at the beginning of the song. So I'm going to click and drag it all the way to the left there. Okay. So there's locator one. Now we're going to go to locator two. I'm going to right click, do add locator. We'll do two. This song is called battle belongs. You can see, I'm just going to type that song name in and then let's go to song three. Okay. So we'll go here, add locator three, and this is called better view. Okay. So I've got three locators added to my set. It's important to note that when you drag Ableton sessions from one session into another, your locators don't come with it. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I've got this, what I call markers track down here below. Uh, that's kind of a, a way to compensate for that and as a workaround for that. And we'll talk about adding locators in our song in just a moment. Uh, but again, if you want some extra help to make this super easy from studiostage.com slash template uh, and check out all the videos I've linked in the description of this where we walk through doing that. So we've got our locators connected. Now, how can we make it to where we can use our MIDI controller like this one? This is the Oakboard Mini. Uh, from Oak Tone, which is my favorite MIDI controller. Uh, it's very simple. How can I assign buttons on this to trigger and control uh, specific songs? So let me show you how to do that. First thing I'm gonna do, I've connected my MIDI controller to my computer via USB. Uh, your particular controller may be a little different, you might use five pin MIDI, uh, you might use USB, but it maybe requires power as well too. So what you wanna do, check out the manual for your specific MIDI controller for this one in particular, or anything that's USB, I'm just gonna connect via USB to my computer. Now let's go over into Ableton Live and we're gonna to go to preferences. The way we access preferences is command comma or control comma if we're on a PC. Next thing we wanna do is go to the link tempo MIDI tab. There's a lot of stuff we can talk about when we're uh, when it pertains to MIDI. Uh, we can do a MIDI control surface. We could talk about takeover mode, but for the sake of today, we wanna to set our input and output for our MIDI controller. In fact, actually we really want, only wanna talk about an input for our MIDI controller in this particular video. So you wanna go and find your MIDI controller listed under the uh, MIDI ports, particularly in the in section. And we want to remotely control live from that MIDI controller. So we're going to enable remote. Okay. With that set up, the next thing I need to do is MIDI map my locators to my MIDI controller. And I love how easy live makes it to do this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to enter MIDI map mode, which the way to do that is to uh, use the keyboard shortcut command M or control M if you're on a PC 
or you can go up to this mini map mode button up here and click that. Now, anything that is blue is going to be MIDI mappable. And if you look at our locators here, these are all MIDI mappable. So here's how we MIDI map things. I'm going to click on this locator and then I'm going to go to my MIDI controller and I'm going to choose this button here for song one. Actually, let's, let's do this differently because I have play up here. So I know I could get to song one for this particular controller. I'm limited to just a couple buttons. So I'm going to do, I'm going to improvise a little bit. Let's select song two here. Okay. And now let's go to this button and I'm going to select that. Okay, so I press that and you can see up here that is MIDI map. Now it's a little hard to see. So let me open Live's browser and you can see that I MIDI map MIDI channel 16 note C sharp one to song two battle belongs. Okay, so let's go to song three. We'll click this locator. I'm going to click this button up here at the top and that's map there. Again, I could show you in our browser uh, channel 16 note E1. Now here's the reason why I did not map song one. Now, if you have uh, a MIDI controller that allows, uh, that has a bunch of buttons, uh, I've got a few here, like the Personas Atom is a great solution. Um, maybe a foot controller that has multiple buttons, then for sure map every single one of your songs for this particular controller. And I'll show it in a moment why I don't normally map uh, specific songs. But for this particular controller, I'm choosing to map song two, song three. Uh, and the reason I'm not mapping song one is uh, we're going to get there a different way. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. So let's go back in Ableton Live. I want to map my play and my stop button. Now, I think I've already mapped it for this controller, but I'm going to delete those mappings. I'm going to click play. And then as you probably guessed on my controller, I'm going to press play. And then I'm going to click stop. And yep, this was already mapped for my controller, but we're redoing it. It's perfectly fine. And I'm going to press stop. So now to get to song one, I'm going to press stop on my MIDI controller. You see this jumps us back to one there, and then I'm going to press play. Okay. And that's going to start me at the beginning of my set. Let me turn that on so you can hear that. You're only going to hear the click. I've got the click solo just so YouTube doesn't try to demonetize the video, but I can press stop, press play. Uh, and we've got our click running there, um, uh, for that particular song. So let's press stop again. Now let's go to song two. So for song two, let's press this button. Okay. So I'm going to press it and you see that we jump directly to song two. I can then press play and that's going to play. Our click is going, I can press stop to stop that. Now let's press this button up here. Okay, that's going to jump us to song three. You can see we're on song three and then I can press play and that's going to take me to song three and then I can press stop to stop that. Okay, so that's a look at how we can really easily navigate our songs using our MIDI controller um, in the middle of our set. Again, if you're coming from session view, you're probably used to seeing all your different scenes and being able to just go over here and trigger song one song two, song three. And if you've wondered how to do that over in arrangement view, again, it's as simple as adding locators for your specific songs. And you can MIDI map specific locators to specific control uh, on your MIDI controller. But what happens if you have a MIDI controller like I do that only has a few buttons? Um, and in particular, I only map four things to my MIDI controller typically. Now, occasionally I'll have a bigger set. When I have a bigger set, I showed this earlier, typically use something like the PreSonus Atom and map each one of my songs to a drum pad. But how can you use a MIDI controller and really only four buttons, play, stop, previous, and next to navigate your set? Let me show you how I do that, okay? So let's go into Ableton Live. I'm gonna go back to MIDI map mode and I'm gonna delete these uh, specific mappings to locators, okay? Um, we've got all those deleted. Now, one thing I do in addition to this is I do Command K, which is key assign mode. And I'm going to click on these and assign them to uh, one, two, and three on my computer. That way I still get the access that I would if I had a MIDI controller to go to individual songs, but I'm still going to be able to navigate my entire set from my MIDI controller. Okay. So let's get out of key assign mode. Let's go back to MIDI map mode. We've already mapped play and stop. So again, we've got play and stop on our locator, uh, on our MIDI controller. Let's map this previous button and this next button to Ableton Live. So let's go back into Ableton Live and I've already got this map, but we'll remap it here. And I'm gonna click this button, okay? You're only gonna see, well, actually you see it if when you're out of MIDI map mode as well too. But if you've never seen this before, this is called previous locator and this button is next locator. So let's do command M. We're going to click on previous locators. You probably guess we'll map to previous on this particular controller. And we're going to click this. I'll map to next. Now, I think you probably get this, but I just want to mention um, I'm mapping to previous and next. My MIDI controller says previous and next. So that's what I'm choosing. But you could literally uh, uh, choose any pad on your MIDI controller, any key on your MIDI controller to make those mappings. I just particularly happen to have a MIDI controller custom made for this particular scenario. So play, stop, previous and next. Okay, so let's go back into Ableton Live. We're going to get out of MIDI map mode. I want to show you 
how easy it is for me to navigate my set with just these three buttons. Okay, so let's go to song one. So I can go to song one the same way I did before, which is uh, on my MIDI controller here. I'm gonna press stop, okay? And you can see that takes us back to there. And then I can press play for song one. All right, so song one is started. We hear click for that. I'm gonna stop it. Let's go to song two. Guess what I'm gonna press? I'm gonna press next here. So that takes me to song two. I can press play and we'll stop that. And then let's go to song three. We can do that. We can press play. I can navigate back to song two if I want by pressing previous. I can navigate back to song one by pressing previous one more time. Uh, and I get tons of freedom and flexibility with play, stop, previous, and next. Now let's take it one step further. This is something that's really cool. I talk about this when we build a set as a way to uh, give us some freedom and flexibility to jump around in our set and to uh, really navigate our set uh, freely. But let's take these same buttons, play, stop, previous, and next. And I wanna add some additional locators in Ableton Live so that we can navigate our set uh, within our song just by using previous and next. So back in Ableton Live, you remember me mentioning earlier that when I build a set with locators uh, or with songs and multiple songs dragging from uh, a different Ableton set, my locators don't come with it. So what I'm gonna do is add locators for all these song sections. And I'm using this markers track here as a guide on how to add those locators. Now it's possible to have Ableton add these locators for you automatically. I talk about that in our tracks through one course, but I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can do it manually if you want to. So up here at this set button, I'm gonna do Command K. Oh, you can see I've already mapped this. Um, I've got it mapped to L for locator, okay? And this is just on my keyboard. So the way I did this is I click set and I pressed L, okay? The way I'm gonna be able to use this is go to this intro here and I'm gonna press L on my keyboard. First, L, chorus, L. I'm just clicking on these markers and I'm just pressing L to add these locators in, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna do this for song one for the sake of time. And again, uh, I have got uh, just our click solid here just so that you don't hear the stems and the tracks. Uh, again, so that YouTube doesn't uh, demonetize me or, or take this video down. So now let's press play on our MIDI controller. This is gonna play. I'll turn our click down just for a moment so you can hear me talking as well. Okay, that's gonna play. Let's say I wanna repeat our intro. I'm gonna press previous and I'm gonna wait till the measure before right here, okay? And that's gonna repeat back. Now I'm waiting to measure six based on this one bar quantization up here. So anytime in that bar when I press it, it's gonna wait till the next downbeat of one to jump ahead. What's nice about this is I can wait in this bar here and let's go to our chorus. So I'm gonna press next I'm gonna press it twice. And by pressing it twice, I navigate it over to our chorus. Because this is set to one bar, it means whatever action I perform, previous next locator, it's gonna wait till the next downbeat of one to perform that action. So let's press previous again to repeat it, and we'll jump around, we'll re repeat it. Um, I could repeat mid song section if I wanted, but just again, you're gonna jump halfway through, but let's jump to our verse. I could do that if I wanted to. But what's really nice about this is as my song is playing and I'm pressing previous, or as I'm pressing next, I can navigate my entire song quickly. Now, if my song is stopped, and I wanna to get to song two. This is obviously not as easy as having, again, a MIDI controller like this that just has song two mapped on it and I press two. It's so not as simple as that, but what's really nice about this is I can use, again, I've stopped. Let's actually go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, so I press stop to take us back to the beginning and I can click next. And again, it's gonna take quite a few button clicks, which is not optimum, but I can click next until I get to song two and then I can press play and uh, immediately play song two, which is great. So that's a look at how we can use our MIDI controller to really easily jump to specific songs in our Ableton Live set list. But in addition to that, use just four buttons on our MIDI controller, play, stop, previous, and next, to navigate our entire song, repeat song sections, jump ahead song sections, and really jump anywhere in our, our set just using four buttons. So make sure you download that template for free and then check out the links in the description of this video where I give you a walkthrough of the template, show you how to format your songs using that template, and then eventually build an Ableton Live set of multiple songs using that template. And you can apply the concepts you learned in this video on how to navigate your set very easily using only four controls on your MIDI controller. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Central. We'll see you next week, 10 a.m. Central, as we post new content every single day here on the channel. If you like this content, make sure to, to subscribe. You can use the link uh, in the comments to do that or in the description to do that. And uh, hit that bell icon so you hear when we post a new video every single day. 10 a.m. Central. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.